for our city, our communities, our homes, and most importantly, our hearts. And we're so glad that you're joining us for Hope today because we love to bring you inspiration for your everyday life. And I'm so happy that it's Monday and Tom and uh, Amanda are here with us today. And we have such an incredible guest with us coming oh, up. Oh, I know. Patrick Morley is going to be with us. He has a book called The Four Voices. And have you ever been frustrated with different voices in your head trying to sort that out? What's God? And What's the other competing voices that are in there? Well, we're going to find out exactly how to do that. You know what? It's going to set you on a new path of clarity in understanding the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's going to be great. Don't miss it. Awesome. And then, of course, we had an amazing event, y'all, in our city this weekend. I'm still recovering. I mean, I am shades of <laughs> pink and... <laughs> Red, but it was an awesome time. You know, this moment of Pittsburgh praise was we were singing Amazing Grace and this wonderful cloud blocked the sun from the crowd. And I just thought in reality, you know, that is the grace of God that when he keeps the wrath that we should be getting from hitting us. And I'm like, I was ever grateful for that cloud and we should have just kept singing Amazing Grace because when we were done, y'all, the cloud left <laughs> and the sun the stayed. But departed. it was an awesome event. It was awesome. It was an incredible display of unity. I mean, you saw people of all different colors and different backgrounds. And I think it didn't matter if you're Catholic, Protestant, Pentecost, whatever. I feel like those that doesn't matter, we are all one in Jesus Christ. And it was so beautiful. I think there was a, there's a picture right there you see on the state. I mean, there was like overflow of people and this was worship. I love that there was a community, there was a unity choir. So it was different people from churches from across the area and one touching moment um, at the very end that I, there was a cross they were carrying the cross and that was actually a cross made from light of life our friends that are over there and that there was prayers written for from the men and women who were at the shelter and actually the men that were carrying the cross are part of the program and the um, the covering of the purple cover was actually made from the women from light of life so it was such a beautiful and touching tribute and we had an opportunity to show it here on cornerstone too so if you were able to watch and tune in we were all joined in it was such an incredible time Tom. I know we were so glad to be able to broadcast that and you know it was it was something that we um, we kind of came in kind of late but we were able to get it all put together in fact I got a text at like five minutes to four saying they're gonna go longer than four o'clock because everything was a little bit behind that that happens a lot and we were able to extend that and, and put and broadcast another half an hour but uh, being there it, we moved out of the sun Amanda up into the shade you know there was a little <laughs> bit of a shade just a little bit of a shady area but uh, it was great to see the body of Christ praying together uh, showing the love of God and just, uh, you know, praying for the city. It was yeah, an awesome it was, time. It was truly incredible. You know, one Pittsburgh pastor described Pittsburgh praise as dopeness, <laughs> which I wholeheartedly agree. And those are the words from our dear friend, Pastor Michael Day from Legacy International Worship Center. And he's joining us live today from his church in the city's north side neighborhood to talk about a community initiative happening today with police officers. Pastor Mike, we're so happy to have you with us today. So oh, glad to be here. Thank you all for allowing me to do this. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm still recovering myself from an amazing uh, day yesterday from all the different amazing events that happened here in Pittsburgh. But thank you for having me live here at Legacy. Yeah, no, I know. Like we're all feeling it right now. We're soaking in the glory and just like the over afterglow. But, you know, tell us about what's going on today at your church. And it's part of a new movement called Faith in Blue. Yes, I'm really excited. In a few hours, uh, clergy community leaders, the police of Pittsburgh are all coming together live here at 11 o'clock for what is called the community cookout. Uh, there's an initiative, Faith in Blue uh, is partnering with uh, One Cup, which is a national movement that is uh, projected to make sure that clergy and the police and families are partners, have great relationship and have fellowship within the community. It's solely about police and clergy coming together to make sure we have safer cities and safer communities. And so we're having a huge cookout here at 11 o'clock right here on the north side. Pastor Mike, I love that so much. And why would you say now more than ever, especially here in the city of Pittsburgh, I mean, we have seen so much violence and different things breaking up that it's important for faith leaders, Christian leaders, and the police to come together for such a time as this. Well, we believe that the church should be the forefront, should be the voice of any initiative that's going on in the world. And so we believe that a part of that is connecting with the local authorities, whether elected officials or our police department to collaborate and to partner to make sure that we have the proper resources, support and partnership to make sure that our community, our youth and our families feel safe and that the police are actually 
uh, are part of the relationship in our communities. And so the clergy are making sure that we are doing that as well. well we wholeheartedly like appreciate that. And you know, one thing, how can we pray for, you know, the North side and the city of Pittsburgh? I know at Pittsburgh Praise yesterday, uh, Mayor Ganey was talking about praying for the youth. There's, you think we should be, we're obviously gonna continue to pray for the youth, but there's anything specifically also that we need as a body of Christ to pray for your community. <laughs> Pray for the youth, pray for the families. Most importantly, pray for strategy for us community leaders. Uh, we need strategy, so we have been doing a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of conversations around the violence of our youth, uh, but we really need the wisdom of God and the Holy Spirit to give us guidance on how to not only impact the youth, but families, but also how to collaborate with the police, how to collaborate with our elected officials, such as Mayor Ganey, who are completely 100% supportive of this movement. And so we really need the wisdom of God because a lot of this is very new to especially specifically our city. And so we wanna make sure that we do it in excellence. That is so good. Thank you so much, Pastor Mike. And one qu final quick question. Do we need to bring anything to the cookout? Do we have to bring a dish or it's all, we're all good? <laughs> Everybody just come out. Uh, the, the food is on its way. Uh, the police department zone one is on its way in minutes. And so uh, just come. Anybody can come. Everybody, you don't, you don't even have to be a part of the Northside community. This is for the city. And so we're just really excited to welcome everybody. Come on down, 11 o'clock, 2131 Wilson Avenue, Legacy International Worship Center. We are excited to receive you. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Mike, and we know it's going to be a great event. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tom. Anytime you get people together for a cookout, it's a good time. It's a good time in the city. Well, our next guest is the executive chairman of the popular global man in the mirror ministry. Patrick Morley is also one of the most respected authorities on the unique challenges and opportunities facing men. And in his new book, The Four Voices, he shares how you can determine where the four conflicting voices in your mind are coming from and what they're saying and how you can let the Holy Spirit take control of the conversation. Patrick, welcome to Hope Today. Well, thank you. Thank you, Tom and Amanda, Sydney. Good to be with you and hello, Pittsburgh. Well, great to have you. And uh, Patrick, you know, let, maybe we could start with, uh, you know, are those, those voices, those four voices, biblically, what are the four voices that compete for uh, real estate in my mind? Yeah. So let me just give you the whole arc of the, uh, the book in like one minute, okay? So we, we all know that we have a running conversation with ourselves all day long. We call it self-talk. We need self-talk. That's how we take all the bits and pieces of our lives and fit them together into some kind of a congruent story that helps us make sense of things. However, you are not the only voice in that conversation. There are these four other voices, the world, the flesh, the devil, and the Holy Spirit, and they are constantly exerting themselves to influence what we think, say, and do. Our job, your job, is to figure out which voice is speaking and then take control of the conversation. Pretty cool, huh? I mean, that is so important to have that discernment, which I really think this, this is what this is. It's a, it's a discernment to know what, what yeah. God is, is, is saying, what the Holy Spirit is saying. Well, let me ask you about, maybe we could take one of these right off the top here, the world. Could you define oh, yeah. that? And how is the world getting inside, you know, getting into that conversation? What things are happening to bring the world into that conversation in our minds? Oh, that's a great question. So Tom, the world is, uh, in a biblical sense, when the Bible starts talking about the world, it's not talking about the whole creation. I think it's important to understand that uh, there's a lot of good in the world. In fact, Frodo said, uh, there's a lot of good in the world, and it's worth fighting for it. Francis Schaeffer said that the world has a lot of leftover beauty. So the world's a beautiful place, but when the Bible talks about the world, it's talking about that part of the world which is fallen or not redeemed. And so let me give you an example. So when I was a young businessman just getting started, I knew where I wanted to work, what kind of work I wanted to do, and I was able to get an appointment with the owner of the company, this real estate company, and he said, you know, I think you have a lot of promise, but the problem is you don't have enough gray hair, nobody's gonna pay any attention to you, so we can't hire you. So that's the voice of the world saying, you know, you're too young to make a difference. But then I have older guys tell me all the time that, 
the message they're getting, you know, we don't need you anymore. We're done with you. You know, you're expendable. You've been used up. You don't have anything to offer anymore. And so the world's telling the older guy, you can't make a difference. So watch this. The world, the fallen world is telling you, it doesn't make any difference whether you're young or you're older, you really can't make a difference. But the Bible gives a totally different report. So David was a commander of thousands and tens of thousands of men in his 20s. Uh, Joseph was leading Egypt in his 20s. Jesus, Joseph, and David all began their formal careers at the age of 30. So the Bible says, you know, it doesn't make any difference if you're young, you can make a difference. And then on the flip side, you look at Sarah, Abraham, Moses, Paul, they all played their best music in the last one third of their lives. So the Bible says it doesn't make any difference if you're young or old, you can always make a difference. And see how subtle the world's uh, voice is in, in, in terms of uh, trying to influence what we think, say, and do. But you can, uh, once under, understanding how that works, of course, then you can make the adjustment. I think this is a very needed concept for all of us today because there are so yeah. many voices that we are hearing. But your reference, you know, to the Bible as your guide, as our plumb line that we line everything we're thinking about up to. Talk to us about, you know, how as sheep, you know, do we know the voice of the shepherd? What does that look like? Well, so it's, it's very interesting. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? So most of us can understand at least the analogy of God as our Father. He's creator, sustainer, redeemer. And Jesus, of course, was God in the form of human flesh, taking on human flesh for a season so we could really understand God. But the Holy Spirit is a, a bit more of a, a, a tricky idea for most people. Most people don't really have a, a visual image of the Holy Spirit in their mind. Let me give you an idea, though, that might uh, help you in your thinking, listeners. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that all scripture is breathed by God. And the Bible says that God is spirit. And so the, the spirit of God is, is breathing his word through human agency, inspiring 40 different human authors to use their own words, but to get his ideas across. And so the Bible actually is the voice of the Holy Spirit. How about that? Now, that's a wild one. That, that might, just, might have just blown somebody's mind on that one. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that is so good to, to know that voice of the Spirit through the scriptures. And, you know, I want to I just back up one, one little step here to the, the, you know, you mentioned the devil, the voice of the devil. Now, I don't really want the devil stomping around in my, my brain like that and, and giving me his thoughts. How do we recognize when something, because the devil can be subtle, you know, obviously there's, there's clear things when we're tempted to do sin, we know that's the enemy, but how do we know when it's a subtle temptation from the enemy? Uh, when you wake up in the middle of the night, this is 2 a.m. is when the devil does his best work, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you wake up and you start having thoughts and those tumble onto other thoughts and before you know it, you're way off base. And uh, so a friend of mine, one of my co-teachers at our Friday morning Bible study, he says, if it doesn't sound like the Holy Spirit, it's not him. So when you have a voice in your head that uh, is leading you to have negative thoughts about your spouse, uh, to be unduly angry at your children for acting like well, however old they are, and they're supposed to be acting that age anyway, uh, you can be fairly confident that it's either the, 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 the world, the flesh, or the devil is working on you. Here's the problem with all these, these three negative voices. They don't raise their hand and say, oh, excuse me, could I please uh, say something now? They just sort of jump in and they're often talking over each other. So what I've done in this book to help you, the reader, is I've said to each of these voices, you, each of you go to your corner and don't say anything, shut up, and I'm going to talk about you individually so that people can understand 
who you are and uh, how you operate and how to take control of the conversation when you're speaking. So um, th now in reality, these voices are talking over each other, right? But those are just a few thoughts that uh, you might take into account. Mm -hmm. This is so needed. I heard you talk about that, that morning Bible study. And I know that yeah. that is an important part, it should, of all of our lives. But if you could help us and our viewing audience, you know, how do we apply this? How is the, do you have like a, a study book or something that a person could follow, a guide to get to know God and His voice? Yeah, so in this book, uh, okay, uh, if you've read my books, then you know that I'm very careful. I want to make sure that we're trying to solve the right problem. Because you've tr if you're trying to solve the wrong problem, you can only succeed by accident, right? So we do spend a good amount of time, 10 or 20% of the time, trying to really understand what the issues are. But the vast majority of all my books, and this book included, it's about solutions. So I have 27 very practical strategies or ideas in this book, all biblical, right out of the Bible, on how we can take control of the conversation in our head. And there's some of the standard things you can think about. Some of you who uh, are followers of Jesus would know about the armor of God. And so we'll talk about the armor of God in there. I talk about the uh, seven ways in the Bible to concern God's will. So you're trying to figure out which voice is speaking, figure out uh, what the will of God is. That's and so I would say half of the book is about the Holy Spirit and uh, maybe half of the book is about the other voices and how you can get mastery of them. You know, Patrick, I know going through your book, you've got, I mean, you've got even like uh, charts to kind of help us discern where that voice is coming from. Uh, let me just ask you for a, a story, either a personal story, someone you know that's been helped by really being able to sort out those voices in, in, in our minds. Yes, so I have a friend, one of our table leaders at our Friday morning Bible study, estranged from his father, very difficult relationship, both he and his sister, estranged for decades from his father. He took a job, I'm in Orlando, he took a job uh, down in uh, Palm Beach, which is about a three, three and a half hour drive from here uh, to be the CEO of a small startup insurance company. And so he would leave every Monday morning uh, and then drive down and he'd come back on Thursday evenings to watch his daughter play soccer and then lead his table on Friday morning. So one morning he was on his way down to uh, uh, Palm Beach, West Palm, and about uh, 5.30 in the morning, he heard a voice in his head, call your father. Well, he said, I haven't talked to my father in decades, and besides, it's 5.30 in the morning. And, and then about an hour later, he heard this voice again, call your father. He said, well, I can't call my father. He, he wouldn't answer anyway, it's too early. And then about a half an hour later, the voice in his head when are you going to call your father? And at that point, he realized, kind of like young Samuel, uh, the, uh, hearing the voice of the Lord for the first time, that it must be the Holy Spirit. And so he called his father, not expecting his father to answer the phone at all. His father picked up the phone, and they had this great conversation. And my friend David invited his father to come to the annual Thanksgiving prayer breakfast that we put on here in Orlando not expecting his father to say yes, he did say yes, he came. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. There was this incredible reconciliation between David and his father and his sister as well. And then not only that, the father started attending the Friday morning Bible study and sat at David's table. And the son who was not discipled by the father was able to disciple his own father. And that father sat at that table for the next 10 years until he died. That's the power of knowing how to take control of the conversation. Wow, that is such a tremendous story. Patrick, uh, thank you so much. The book is called The yeah. Four Voices, Taking Control of the Conversation in Your Head. Patrick, yeah. again, thank you so much. That was great. Thank you. Tom, Amanda, Sydney, thank you so much. Well, we're going to take just a short break, and we'll be right back to pray for you.
Are you feeling distant from God? Could it be because you're ignoring His Word? Maybe you don't know where to start. Maybe the long books and strange names feel overwhelming. Perhaps you just don't like reading. Whatever the case, How to Eat Your Bible will help you cultivate an appetite for lifelong study of God's Word. Find practical guidance for overcoming the hurdles that have kept you from making Bible study a regular part of your life. Pastor Nate Pickowitz also includes a unique seven-year Bible plan so that you can apply what you've learned and continue drawing near to God as you consume His Word. Request your copy of How to Eat Your Bible when you donate your best gift to CTVN. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for giving to Cornerstone Television. This program has been a full program and just to give you hope today and uh, starting out with Michael, you know, the event in Pittsburgh, Get Connected, God's doing an amazing thing. And then what Patrick just shared, you know, even that testimony. And I love the word that kept coming to me that he was saying was Bible study. Like getting in God's word is so important. It's the only way we're going to get accustomed to know his voice. It's like my husband, when I hang out with him so often, which I have for well, 27 years this year, praise God. <laughs> but I know his voice, like when he's talking, I can point it out, I'm like, dad's somewhere around here, I hear him kids. And that's the type of knowing that God wants us to have with him, but it requires us spending time with him. So with that being said, I'd love to read our scripture for the day, and it's coming from Proverbs 4:23, And it says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Sid, this is just full of wisdom for us today. It is. Proverbs is a book that's full of wisdom. And I just think about our hearts. And our hearts, like if we're all just want to keep it real, our hearts can be, are very wicked. There's a lot of yuck inside of there. But when you spend time with Jesus, when you get into the like the quietness and just listen to him and he starts speaking to you, but like, you know what? I want to deal with this issue. I want to speak to you about what's going on here. It's in those moments that I love that the Holy Spirit will share scripture with me that's very convicting or God will speak something to me to just kind of redirect my mind or my path. And so I think it's so important having a relationship with God and being very connected to the word, whatever God speaks to you, always lines up with the word of God. So I love that so much because out of our hearts, he says everything you do flows from it. So we got to have a heart check on the daily, not just when we go to the doctor, <laughs> but we need every day to have a heart check with our heavenly father, with our maker, so that we can walk on the path and that we can do what he is calling us to do. Tom, what about you? What you know, you it's interesting, right before there, we've been talking about the word of God. And of course, this is wisdom kind of talking, but wisdom is talking for God here. And, and wisdom says, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ears to my saying, do not let them depart from your sight, keep them in the midst of your heart. So this is what we're talking about is, we can have all these competing voices and competing affections, things that just want, look, we all have things that we just love and those, those, some of them are really bad and some of them are just okay and even good but they can draw us away, our heart away, guys, from the, the things of God, Amanda, the things that God wants us to set those affections on. That's where it's, we, we've got to guard our heart. We've got to guard our heart of those things because when you, if, if there's something inside of you that you set your affections on so much that it's, it's taking Christ off that throne. So I just have to ask you, is that something you've done? Is that something, I think it's something we've all done at various points. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes with this gentle conviction, not condemnation. That's the voice of the enemy, like we talked about. But this gentle conviction that pulls you back to say, God, I want to set you as the center of my heart, as the Lord of my heart, that my affections and my thoughts will be on you completely. Right. We're, we're the only Jesus that people are going to see in a lot of cases. And, you know, one prayer that from Pittsburgh praise it, I just keep hearing this mother say she talked about pride and arrogance and it needs to be shut down. We need to not give life to the things that the enemy is doing. And she said to operate in humility. And that is one of the biggest things, I think, even with the Pittsburgh Leadership School, that no matter what platform God gives you, there is a rock that is higher than I. 
And our, our job here on earth is to be looking to that rock and pointing other people to that rock. And who is that rock? Jesus Christ. And it is what our network here lives to do, to spread the good news of Jesus so that people can have the opportunity to stand on that firm foundation and to point others to him. Said. Amanda, as you were just speaking, I just think about, you know, we had this major gathering where thousands and thousands of people came together. We're praying for, you know, our city. We're praying for our nation. We're praying for our world. But the one thing that, as Amanda was just speaking, that God laid on my heart is that nothing will change if we don't change. And it talks about repentance. And I think a lot of times that's a word we don't like to really hear because sometimes it means we have to look inside. We have to look within and deal with the yuck and the junk in our lives because all of that, if we don't deal with it, it will infect other people. Sin is very, it'll spread. It's a, it's a virus. It's the worst virus that's out there. And one thing that God has just been really speaking to me, did you know that repentance, you know, the way that I, you know, it's like, yes, we're sinners. And, but it really means it's a positive change. It's when you seek the heart of the Father, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, when you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, when you allow God to get deep into your heart and to deal with those things that you really don't wanna talk about and you really don't wanna face. But guess what, church, we got to, we have to, because guess what, the world is waiting on us. We have the solutions, we have the answers to what is happening in our world, but we first, we have to change. I know we do a lot of finger pointing, look at the world, what they're doing, no, look at us. It is time for us to look at ourselves and know what God wants to change in us. And the biggest thing I love what Amanda, you were saying is pride and humility. We got to lay it all down, humble ourselves and be like Christ. Any final thoughts, Tom? You know, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about it with Patrick, but secrecy is really that where the flesh grabs on. What Sydney was just saying, when we get real, when we get open and when we have that that again in a protected environment but open and say i'm struggling with this i'm 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 not winning the battle here when you do that you begin to have that freedom you begin to have that that just take de deconstructs all the chains that the enemy has tried to 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 put around you and, and to hold you down and when you do that you're going to find god in a new way and you know what you're going to find his hope because hope happens here On tomorrow's Hope Today, ever need life to just slow down and give you a moment? Humor writer Anna Lind Thomas offers a comical take on the lessons she's learned in life and reminds us that God is always in control no matter the circumstances. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.